My name is Ron and today I'm going to be covering the basics of Sony Vegas and also some very commonly asked questions around the internet and uh, to me directly uh, via Xfire email and forums. So, I mean, we've all been there, we've all been brand new to an application, we don't know what to click and when we ask someone else who knows and they tell us, we feel pretty stupid for not knowing. So hopefully this will clarify some things uh, in Vegas that you've been wondering or um, anyone has been wondering just uh, getting into Vegas. So anyway, we're going to go into Vegas. Now what I'm going to be covering in this tutorial is layouts, uh, changing the style and properties of your video, uh, pan cropping and zooming in on the timeline, uh, taking screenshots, video source pan crop which basically stretches it to fill the screen so you don't have black bars on the side, lowering the opacity and uh, splitting and moving changing time of clips, composition modes and changing the volume. So first on my little list here um, we have changing the way Vegas looks. Now in Vegas 9.0 Pro we have this grey scheme which is great for light compositions but if you're working with something really dark you may want to consider changing it to uh, a lighter theme uh, kind of like how you can do in, or in After Effects where you can change the slider. So if we go to Options Preferences and go to Display um, Use Vegas color scheme. Basically, if I uncheck this, click apply, and then it'll ask me to restart Vegas, which I will do now. As you can see, we now have our old, um, older Vegas version color scheme. So if we go back into preferences and display, we also have another interesting option, which is called display timeline at bottom of main window. Now, basically by default this is checked. Now if you can view the layout I have now you can see that my video preview and my effect and transition explorer project media everything is down here and the timeline is on top so basically inverted everything as opposed to this. I prefer to have it at the bottom and that's my opinion because I can see the video preview uh, better because I'm sitting at a lower angle and my screen's further up so I can have true colors because I don't have a one of those monitors that display true colors wherever you sit. Anyway, um, basically, the next thing I'm going to cover is changing the style and properties of uh, your video. So let me just drag in Alt F4, our Alt F4 video here. And if we go to File, Properties, this is our video composition properties. And in here, by default, I think you'll have something like HDV or NTC, NTSC DV preset. Now, if you're going to be rendering to YouTube high definition, you definitely want the HDV 720 uh, 30p preset. Um, and I'm going to go over some of the basic settings here because um, I think they're important to help you understand what they are. So, the pixel aspect ratio, basically, we want this to be square because the PC monitors today use square pixels. So, if you don't know what the others are, then you probably don't want to, don't want to be using them. Uh, in my opinion and the frame rate is 29.97 which is DVD quality obviously you can change this but 29.97 makes it uh, an equal balance between um, quality and file size so uh, some DVDs use 24 but uh, I just prefer to use 29.97 and it's the most common for frag videos now the field order is progressive scan because we want to scan everything progressively as opposed to upper field first or lower field first uh, it's just easier that way. The pixel format is 8-bit now you can change this to 32-bit depending on what you want but that changes the color bit depth um, the full resolution and rendering quality this should be at best uh, it just basically uh, asks what that which you can what the preview is which you can change later anyway uh, I use Gaussian motion blur uh, you can experiment with the others to get kind of the blur you want Okay, so in audio, we have something called uh, stereo and 5.1 surround sound. Surround sound enables you to let um, audio come out from one speaker at a time, which I'll demonstrate now. So, if we just take this, we have front, rear, center. Now, if we turn down the front and as you can hear, uh, we're hearing more out of one speaker than the other. 
so if you want to pull that effect off you want to be using 5.1 surround sound and uh, it's also good for obviously surround sound systems but again for frag videos I use stereo um, because it, it's just not needed for surround sound so the ruler uh, we don't really need to go into that summary that's just if you want to uh, tag your rendered things which I wouldn't do anyway because I use an encoder okay so we have that covered now I hope that clarifies what you want to be using if you want to produce 720p videos use the HDB 720p video uh, preset if you want to uh, produce 1080 uh, you can select one of the 1080 uh, presets I'd use 1920 uh, as opposed to the other resolution because that's more common so um, okay back to our little list of things to do here now another question that I commonly get asked is how do you get closer to your footage as in how do you zoom in on the timeline to see specific things and go through more detailed um, basically it's a scroll wheel and that's all it is on your mouse you just scroll in and out to uh, zoom basically now uh, for taking screenshots uh, it's very easy basically this here um, tells the screenshot what kind of quality you'll have so if you put this to draft then quarter it's gonna look really uh, bad but if we put this to best and full it's gonna look the best as it can and to take the screenshot we want to click this save snapshot to file button and that's all you want to do um, okay now next is grid snapping and grid spacing and not only will I cover that but I'll cover basically a lot of things in the options and that is uh, enable snapping snap to grid snap markers snap to all events grid spacing rule of format blah 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 so the first thing we have is enable snapping now basically what snapping is is that basically if I were to move this down here it would snap to one of these as opposed to me having to move it very smoothly to get it where I want now I always have enable snapping on the grid snapping is so it, it snaps to certain places in your video I leave that off uh, snap to markers again these are the markers these um, orange things here okay now grid spacing that's something I get asked a lot and I have these to frames and basically what that is is the space in which uh, our timeline marker moves our frames so frame 1 frame 2 frame 3 frame 4 etc basically if you zoom right in you can see our uh, little grid here so I leave that at frames ruler format I don't really know what that is this is a ruler I would I would leave that at SMPT drop 29.97 FPS automatic crossfades that is when you split two clips and you merge them in e into each other what it does is it automatically creates a fade between them so it smoothly transitions I leave that on you can do whatever you want with that now quick audio edits don't really oh yeah sorry quick fade audio edits basically that just uh, when, when we do this it just um, does it for us basically it smoothens it out uh, and auto ripple I think that's when you join two clips together or something like that. Uh, does something, not really sure to be honest. Uh, and that's about it for that. Now we have video source pan crop. Yeah. So let's pretend we have big ugly black bars on the side of our video. Like this. And we want to get rid of that. So by default it'll look something like this. You want to drop down the source and if we just stretch this out a bit maintain aspect ratio if you put that to no basically uh, it'll stretch to however you want it so let's pretend this wasn't already made let's pretend it had black bars if we put this to no it stretches it out to fill them so you won't have those annoying black bars 